second fight in a row that you're flying out to Asia. Yeah. Uh, obviously, a bit of a haul to get here, but uh, I, I understand you like it. So, w w what's it like for you uh, doing this again? Uh, this is a lot of fun for me, man. Like, I've been fighting in Canada for so long. Like, over a decade, I've been trapped. So, I'm free now and I'm exploring. I want to explore the whole world. I don't want to fight again in, like, North America for at least another five fights. That's awesome. What about any lessons? I mean, obviously, getting, you know, getting your sleep schedule right, getting the right food is, is kind of tough to do when you fly over here. Did you take anything out of that first experience? Um... Yeah, I just realized that it was it's it's a not a really a big deal unless you make it a big deal. Like I know a lot of people are like, oh well, you should go like at least a week in advance and and uh, what are you gonna eat when you're over there? Like it's not a big deal, man. I last time I I was really stressed about it and it ended up being pretty easy. And this time it's even easier because I'm fighting in the morning here, so I don't really have to adjust the sleep schedule too much. You always end up being tired really early, but it's fine if I sleep early because I'm gonna get up early. I'm gonna fight early it's, it's good man you mentioned obviously picking up your first official UFC win talk about the emotion that what it meant to you after to, to, to get that victory maybe not as exciting as you may have wanted it to be but a, an important win nonetheless yeah for me it was uh it was a real milestone um I needed a win in UFC uh I needed to not get knocked out again and I needed to make sure that the theories that I'd been creating the uh the philosophies that I had adapted to my game uh, were correct and that I was on the right path and I proved to myself that I was on the right path. Um, my defense, the, my, the defense aspect of my game was on point in that fight. I was never in trouble, I was never exposed. Um, my opponent was exposed in, in multiple situations that I, I failed to capitalize on and that's now what I, what I am adding this time is I'm going to capitalize when I expose him. You mentioned the knockout and then not being knocked out. I'm wondering, did you go back and watch UFC 174? Did you just want to forget about it? And, you know, was there any concern? Because I saw some people saying, Cajun might need to call it a career. That was, that was a rough one. So what was your process after that? Uh, I definitely watched it. I watched that fight. I watched uh, the fight with Chad LaPreeze. Uh, I watched multiple other fights. Um, with people that I've emulated and people that are having success in MMA and people that aren't having success in MMA. And I, I brought all that into my calculations when I was trying to w figure out what I'm supposed to learn. How, how do I go forward from here? And because of all that studying work, all that homework that I had to do, which also helped because I couldn't really try, couldn't train for a long time after that. So I had a lot of time to watch and learn. And because of that experience, I was able to create what you're going to see here on Sunday. Very nice. Talk about the matchmaking now that you're here. Uh, kind of weird. I mean, you're coming off a, a big win for you. He's coming off back-to-back -back losses. Not really the way that UFC normally does it. Did you did you look at it and go, well, why is this the fight they're putting together? Uh, not really. Uh, I kind of understand it. I think I can, I can see what they're trying to do. Like, first of all, um, they don't have a whole array of Japanese lightweights and they would like a foreigner to be fighting with a Japanese person um, that way that it's a better for the draw also I think that because of the way I speak and because of my personality and who I am as a person and how I fight I think that the UFC really likes me and I think they are trying to prepare me uh, for the higher ranks so they're kind of giving me this uh, to see what I'm gonna do with it is he going to be the dude that just goes out there and fights safe all the time wins a bunch of decisions and doesn't really finish anybody or is he going to capitalize on this and take him out and do it in an exciting fashion so I think it's a bit of a test and also I think they're grooming me do you guys have history together? I saw a tweet you had where you know he said something about tension and whatever, and you're like, I, I still say we're friends. Do you guys have a relationship? No, no. I but I, I respect him a lot as a martial artist. I respect everybody that does this, uh, and I love all humanity. You know, I I try to have unconditional love for every single person if I can. If I'm trying to achieve that, I think that's the whole purpose of life, really. So regardless if we're going to compete against each other or we're not, uh, I can see him as a friend. And whether or not he feels the same way about me has doesn't really influence me. Interesting. You know, you talked about being well spoken and that sort of thing. Outside of your fighting, you're very uh, active in politics and you know things of that nature. I'm just curious. Do you see yourself being some kind of a politician or an activist, something like that, when you're fighting? Days are done. Um, I I try to do what I think is best at all times. So if I see something that I think is wrong, I'm going to call it out, um, and I'm going to use my platform in order to do that. Now in the future, uh, I will continue to be involved with these different types of things, protests and the like, and. 
I will never be involved in politics directly because I don't really believe in the system as a whole. I think that there are some serious flaws and I don't think that um, I can change them from within the system. I think that the system would change me before I changed it. And you uh, mentioned not wanting to fight in Canada or in North America again for a while. I'm Canadian as well, from Vancouver, I live in Toronto. Um, so uh, what do you make of the whole Canadian MMA scene right now, though? You know, UFC only did two shows this year. Every other year since I think they debuted there, it's been three. So what do, you, do you think it's you know, a healthy state right now? Do you think uh, guys are getting the opportunities to get the fights they need, all this stuff to kind of build the MMA scene up in Canada? Uh, it's a problem right now, actually. Um, for one... Uh, the scene outside outside of the UFC in Canada is really taking a downturn. Uh, Montreal, which used to be the hub, is pretty much empty of fights. Like there's very very few fights. It's very difficult for anybody that's coming up to get anywhere because all of the fighters only want to fight fights that are very smart because they have to have an O or a 1 on their record in order to get into UFC. So everybody's trying to get into UFC, which means they're not taking any risks. Um, when I was coming up, people fought because they liked to fight, and that's not really the case anymore. Everybody's just trying to be a superstar. Um, also, I think that it's kind of oversaturated a bit in, in Canada. Um, not necessarily to the fault of UFC, but it's just the way that the world is working right now where there's been a lot of fights. People came up watching the, the George St. Pierre's, the David Loazos, and now that those guys are done, I don't see any real life being breathed into that market until uh, somebody appears on the scene or that is already on the scene that reaches a level um, where everybody in Canada can start to get behind them. And I'm trying to make that me. Yeah. Awesome. And, uh, you know, just trying to change topics a bit, every single one of your UFC fights has been against an Asian fighter. Uh, what, do you, what do you make of that? Do you think, you know, do you enjoy fighting Asian fighters? Because obviously they have a background, you know, samurai spirit, toughness, all those kind of things. Is that something that you enjoy, you know, approaching an opponent about? Yeah, well, I never, um, I've never asked for any of these opponents. They've all been given to me. Yeah. Uh, I welcome it, definitely, because generally speaking, uh, the Asian culture is the Asian cultures because there are many um, are very respectful um, so you're not you all rarely I've probably never seen an Asian fighter that is really brash and arrogant and talks a whole bunch of trash uh, which I have no problem fighting but I would rather fight another martial artist that is respectful of me and we can just go out there and compete I guess just final question. I mean, when you when you been envisioning this fight since you've been studying so much and you know creating this game plan, creating this new form, how, how do you see this thing playing out? Um, I kind of try to let go of the outcome as much as possible. If we focus on the outcome, then we we lose focus on the process. So there are many different ways that I can win this fight. Um, I see that he has a hole in his ability to deal with and to give ground and pound because of the majority of his fights have come in an organization that does not allow ground and pound. So I, I could see myself winning uh, via TKO or KO from ground and pound. Um, my ability to, to close distance and to fight from a very far distance, uh, also the length of my body in comparison to his, uh, would also allow me to put him out from a knockout. Um, and also, he's going to be attacking submissions, especially on legs. Uh, from what I see, he's got a lot of finishes on legs, and I love leg locks. Uh, I think that my, my knowledge of leg locks is a bit more advanced. So, well, not advanced, but more new school. And I believe that I have a great knowledge of these positions uh, that maybe even more than him. So if he at tries to attack my leg locks, I, I, my legs, I could also see it finishing via counter leg lock. So really, I have a lot of different options and I'm just going to see where what he does. It all depends on his reactions.